Welcome. My name is George Pearson, and I run the How To Gurus channel here on YouTube. Most of the videos in my channel are short demonstrations of the different tools and techniques you'll find in various software programs. Right now I have several hundred of these quick videos available on YouTube. This video, though, is different. This is part of a new series of longer demonstrations that I'm doing to show you how to complete complex projects from start to finish using a variety of techniques and tools. All of the images I use in these projects are in the public domain and I've included a link to the pictures in the video description in case you want to work along using the same images. Okay, let's move on to the project. In this Photoshop Elements effects project, I'm going to show you how to do a controlled soft focus background. Here's the original picture on the right hand side. Notice how the foreground is in focus and the background is in focus. It's a nice shot, but the background being in focus takes away a little bit of the attention from our foreground subject. On this side, we have the focus shifting from sharp focus in the foreground to a soft focus in the background, but the skier stays perfectly in focus. This actually is a fairly straightforward technique to do, and I'll show you how to do that. And we'll do it over here on this image on the right hand side. Now to start with this, we need to be able to put the image into soft focus. And I'll show you which filter we'll be using, then I'll show you how we're going to do the fancier part of that, which is the controlled soft focus. First off, up here we're using a filter under the blur section called the lens blur right there. This allows you to blur an image out. With the lens blur, you can control how much blur is in the image by controlling the radius of the blur. There's a lot of other little picky things you know, you can try to match the blur to different camera iris styles. We're not going to be getting into any of that. There's no need to. All we care about is that we can control the radius and give us a soft blur using this filter. Now, what we need to do though is to have there be no blur down below here and full blur at the top. So we need to be able to control the blur from top to bottom. And we'll do that by using a layer mask to control the focus, where the focus is applied. Okay, let's first though start off with a little bit of work on this. Now in order to make this work we need to separate the skier out from the background because we're going to be fo you know, soft focusing the whole thing. We can't do that with that skier there. So we're going to be taking the skier out. We don't need to remove the whole skier just down to the boots because this is all going to be in focus down here anyway. So if we just take the skier out right down to the top of the shoes that will be fine for our use. We can then, you know, everything will work out fine for us. So I'll remove the skier, actually doing a selection and putting the skier on a new layer. We're then going to paint out the skier. And the reason for that is if you go in and do a, a blur, let's go back to our lens blur here, and you do a blur, I'll actually exaggerate this a bit. Notice how the the image spreads out. Right there, you get a spread happening on the image. It's part of the blurring effect is that spreading effect. So if I blurred the background without removing the skier, we would see a blurred edge around our sharp focused skier. So because of that, we have to remove the skier from that background layer. Okay, just a few basic steps. We'll start off here with making a copy of the background, something I like to do all the time. That's now my protection copy. If I mess up, I can always go back to my protection copy. In this copy, we're going to take the skier out. And I'll just name this a couple of things. This is going to be my, well, let's call it the snow layer. And then let's make another copy here. And this will be the skier. So our snow layer and our skier layer. And we'll, we'll take care of moving the skier from that layer second. Let's first come in and actually separate the skier out from the background. And then down here, we're going to remove the skier from the snow layer. So let's go ahead and do that. This is just a basic bit of clone stamping. Now, because there's a lot of area to do here and a lot of variation, we'll need to do you know clone stamping bits at a time. It's not going to be that critical because it's going to be blurring anyway. So I'll start here, left hand side, I'll clear to the left and clear to the top. 
We have the clone stamp tool. Brush size looks okay. Hold the Alt key down and select that spot. Then I'll just come up here and just paint that in. And a little bit of a clone stamp. Now you want to try to make it look as if it's a natural part of the mountain. So it may take a little bit of working around, you know, grabbing from different spots so that it blends in fairly well. Get this little, you know, light edge along here, things like that. Again, it's not real, real super critical because it is going to be blurred out and the viewer's attention is going to be on the skier and not on the snow right behind the skier. And most of what we're doing is actually going to be in behind the skier's figure. It's only when it's just outside the skier's figure that there may be a little bit of something noticeable. So, you know, take your time and do a good job. And then just kind of clone stamp out and slowly work out to remove the skier from the background. Now, now what I'm doing here is I'm, I'm grabbing like that little grab and then coming in and doing a little clone stamp and then a little grab and a little clone stamp. A little grab right there and a little clone stamp. Now realistically speaking you only have to do the skier, remove the skier right around the edges because that's the only part that's going to actually be showing is just the area right around the edges. But I'll be taking out the whole skier anyway just, just to you know keep things nice and consistent here. Let's do the whole well, that way there's no no question, no problem at all with re, with having any skier accidentally showing. Now in here it's not going to matter because this will be behind the main figure. So I can be a little bit faster in this area. But I'll still try to do a good job. Now notice that the horizon line here is going up and it's down here a bit, probably dipped down here or something. Again, doesn't matter right in there. But because of that, you do want to grab from this side and the clone stamp down to this area so we can keep that consistent. I'm going to grab out from here just a little bit and again just, just in behind the jacket is all that really matters. You see like an, an edge like that you need to try to match that edge if you can so it's not going to look a little bit odd. And then just continue the clone stamping. Whenever I move off like this, I'm grabbing a new spot. And just trying to match the look of the snow in the area. There's also the texture. It's fairly smooth because this is quite a ways away. It's a lot rougher down here because this is closer to the actual figure. And it may take again a few careful little small clone stamps to get rid of some of this. But it's all going to work out fine. And of course not really concerned about what's in right behind the figure because that's just not going to show. And we're just about there for this part of the of the image. Let's get the ski pole out of the sky up here. There we go. Just about have that. This is a bit easier. Just because of the background, not as much detail, so it's easier to actually do, to come in here and find something which will blend in. Okay, ski pole is taken care of. Top of the skier is removed. Let's now get to work on the bottom half. This half's a lot easier. Only real tough spot is that one shadow right there. You want to make sure that, that shadow goes through properly. Just about got it. 
Notice the change in the snow again. It's a lot thicker down here than it is right up there. So again, shorter, smaller bits of clone stamping is what's going to be required. I'll just come into the these shoes just a little bit there into those ski boots. Keep in mind again that the figure will be right on top of this figure. The reason why the area down here isn't as important is because down here this will be in sharp focus. We're not going to be blurring anything down here so this isn't going to have any bleeding effect happen. Okay, so we've removed the skier. Let's now back out a little bit and see how that looks. Looks fine, a little strange down here, but it looks fine, that works, that's all we need. Okay, now we're back to the skier again. Now to remove the skier, I'll be doing this with a layer mask. That way we can adjust it later if we need to. To do a layer mask, we'll need to make a careful selection around the skier. I'll, I'll come in and do it right around the boots. And then clear around the whole outfit, around the poles and do a whole selection like that once you have the selection made and we'll cut out that little bit between the legs there once the selection is made then click on the layer mask it will give you a new layer mask here masking out everything that's not included in your selection so I'll do part of this on camera and then I'll turn the video off for a minute finish the rest of the selection and then bring it back up again once that's all done so you don't have to watch me doing this selection I'll be using the polygonal lasso tool and I'll simply be coming around the skier here just carefully and take your time if you're using the polygonal lasso tool keep in mind that if you click your your spots too quickly it's going to collapse the selection down you have to start over again or add to your selection now the way this works is you click a point and you can then drag around find your next point right there click it locks that point in you can then find your next point and then click so it's find your point and click locks it in find the point and click so this tool is very controllable which is one of the reasons why I happen to like using this one it's very easy to do if you're working around a curved surface like we have right here just do your clicks closer together now because we're putting this back onto the image in the exact same place, you don't have to be quite as critical, especially on the boots, of course, because they're still left on the other picture a little bit. But keep in mind that you want to, you know, you want the best job you can you can reasonably do. Also, since we are going to be converting this into a layer mask, we can always go back and edit the layer mask afterwards. So if you mess up a little bit, we can adjust that. Then you get to the edge here, just go just outside the picture, and the image will automatically scroll for you. So that's so what I'll be doing. I'll be going clear around the whole image and making this selection. So at this point, I'm going to pause the video, and as soon as I finish making my selection, I'll bring the video back up again, and we'll make the layer mask at that point. All right, there we are back up again, and there's the selection, selecting out the skier. Notice that I have this area here removed from the selection. That's simply done by using the same selection tool, which I can't show it to you yet. I'll show it in just a second, and then using the remove from selection. Since I've took some time making this selection, I'm going to go ahead and save this selection just in case. So select, save selection. And I'll name that skier. And that's just as a protection. I don't want to have to go back and redo that in the future if I don't need to. So we have our selection made. Let's go up here to the skier layer and then click on this button right here, add layer mask. And you see what it does is it gives me a layer mask which matches that selection. So we're now looking at just the skier and then this background. I can show you that if I hide that background, there it is. It's just the skier sitting on this background that we had. Now to remove that little bit down there if you're using the polygonal lasso tool just switch from new selection over here to subtract from selection and then cut that out. It will then remove that from your selection. Alright we're now going to blur the background and that's filter 
blur and lens blur and this just just kind of a nice blurry background it's at 21 so there's the background blur now you see the problem here is that it's blurry down here as well we want to have it in focus down here and this level of blur up there so we need to have a way of controlling where the blur is being applied and we can do that with a layer mask on this you can actually apply a layer mask and then get that blur effect so let's just undo the lens blur we'll come down here I'll put in a layer mask at this point. I'm gonna make a a secondary copy of this again just as a backup right there so here's the original is our copy underneath now let's put a layer mask on this by default layer mask is all white and white is show black is hide let's just zoom out there we are since white is show and black is hide I can show my blur here and hide the blur down there on this layer mask now notice if I click over here double click actually I get a light blue outline I now have the image selected if I double click over here the mask is selected that's what you want let's now go to our gradient tool and in the gradients one of the default gradients is this one right here it's a black to white gradient it's always up here this is your foreground to background that's foreground to transparent but apparently this is always black to white so let's go for that one and again black is hide and white is show so I'm going to pull from the bottom up hold the shift key down and it gives me black at the bottom white at the top so now if I remove that you can see now we have the mountains showing at the top and not showing at the bottom now we can come back over here to the right side of this and apply our filter on that side filter blur lens blur I'll leave our settings the same but we're going to take our source from the layer mask and there it is by taking the source from the layer mask you can see how it leaves us in focus at the bottom that's where the black is and then it's out of focus at the top where the white is on the layer mask because we're using the source layer mask choose OK and there we go there is our controlled soft focus notice that we have that background copy we're actually seeing this in behind that copy the focus is being applied based upon that layer mask we need to have that backup copy in there to, to fill in that extra area so if I zoom in a little bit now you can see how this is working up at the top nicely blurred here's the image which is up here in front of the background so this stays in focus and as I pull this down see how the focus gets sharper and sharper and sharper right down here until we're in focus around the feet and the skis and that's because of that layer mask so there you go that is how you can create a controlled soft focus or shallow depth of field image on one that doesn't already have it it's, it's a an easy to do technique in a camera but this is how you can do it inside of Photoshop Elements. Thank you for watching this special Photoshop photography project video. Don't forget to subscribe so that you will get first notice of new project videos in the future. Just click on this link right here where it says subscribe here. You can get all 12 project videos in this series along with 26 special videos demonstrating the tools and techniques that I used in these projects by clicking on this link right down here. And then thank you again for watching this training video.